Hi, everybody. Hi, Kerry. How is everybody? The presentation tonight is taking on a little added significance, given what is happening in the world this week. Um, we want to talk about Irish in America 2015. This was me in Belfast, 1971, uh, as a happy little Irish kid. But I emigrated as an Irish person to America in 1999, right here to Minnesota, and I've been here ever since, so I speak as an immigrant. This picture gives you a sort of a, an idea of the size of Ireland compared to the US. It's about 170 miles <laughs> east to west, 300 north to south, so it's not that significant. But when the Irish started to come here, in 1848, after the Great Famine, and I use the word famine like that because there was more than enough food to feed the entire population. But because of capitalism, um, the people starved, and so they had to leave. So they come in, and they're starting to spread their love across the country. To paraphrase the politicians at the time, they were saying, Ireland's not sending their best. They're sending their lazy, they're belligerent, they're drunk, and we assume some of them are nice people. And <laughs> The political cartoons and media at the time sort of tagged on to that. And so the Irish were betrayed, again, with this sort of like monkey-like uh, stupid race. Thankfully, most of those caricatures with the drinking and the fighting and, and the stupidity have not stayed around very long, but today are used only to sell breakfast cereals, T-shirts, and have funny memes on Facebook when it comes up to St. Patrick's Day. The Irish, being a resilient lot, decided to get involved in, in the community, and the undertone of this presentation is Irish people should never be Republicans or anything to do with the RNC. And the reason for that was because when they came here and they stood st uh, strong with their community, they were accepted within their community, but they're ostracized. When they sold their soul and changed their names, they became Republicans until that glorious day when His Holiness, the Sacred Heart of JFK, <laughs> became the President of the United States a hundred years after they first got off those coffin ships. Back home in Ireland, though, when JFK was ruling the roost in the US, things weren't so great because the ironclad hands, or rather the wandering ironclad hands of the Catholic Church, were stifling progress as they were. Up north, the conservative Protestant government had instilled a sort of apartheid system which kept the minority Catholics at bay. If you look at the signs, some of them might resonate today as well. But if there's one thing the Irish love, it's pain and suffering because they can channel that pain and suffering into their art. And the art that was coming out of Ireland at that time has been some of the greatest art, music, poetry, and movies that we've seen in history. Conversely, when the Irish economy was booming in the 90s, the shite that was coming out of Ireland in its droves, of course, was being lapped up by the Americans in their droves. <laughs> this is my opinion. This is just my opinion. We thought in Ireland in 1990, by 1990, it was time that we had a change and it might be okay to have a female president. Not only did we elect Mary Robinson as a president, as a woman, but we re-elected her. And when she was done, then we elected another woman. It might not be a coincidence that the Irish economy during that time was booming and became known as the Celtic Tiger. Things had changed in Ireland. Finally, for the first time since 1860, immigrants were moving back to Ireland instead of going the other way from the US. They were moving there because they were smart, they were educated, and they were young still, and the companies in the US saw this and started setting up their European headquarters in Ireland with a nice little tax incentive. There's that little um, capitalism again. So we're enjoying the good times, the bad times are behind us, and what does anything do when it's behind us like that? It's gonna fuck us, and that's exactly what happened in 2008 <laughs> when you're not watching. So the economy went into the toilet again, but praise the Lord, when things are bad, what's going to get better? The art. And thankfully, over the last few years, we're getting rid of the shite. <laughs> and the good stuff is starting to bubble to the surface again. The other thing we have now is the internet, so we can keep in touch with things back home. And when word starts to spread that we need the people to come home and help with progress, we can do crazy things, unbelievable things, like gay marriage being legal in the entire country. Can you believe that? Yes, yeah, so we've, we've come a long way, America. But in the meantime, I keep hearing people talking about, ah, the look of the Irish. Look me arse. Famine, <laughs> invasions, Catholicism. With luck like that, I'd rather talk about the perseverance of the Irish, the perseverance of the refugees. And you can shove your luck and your lucky charms up your arse. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>